Well, welcome back into Valley News Live. We're bringing you breaking news coverage of riots in downtown Fargo after a peaceful protest this morning in memory of George Floyd uh, turned or escalated around 6 o'clock tonight in downtown Fargo. Our crews have been down in downtown Fargo covering this breaking scene as well as Fargo police as they continue to try and contain uh, this escalated situation. We go now live down to downtown Fargo where our crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley is joined uh, with uh, somebody who's been experiencing this as well. Bailey, we understand. Oh, they running this way. You see that? Beth, uh, give me a second. There's some tear gas that's coming our way, so we're just going to get out of the way a little bit. But I'm joined here right now with Chardonnay. Chardonnay, I want to ask you a question. I haven't been able to ask you this yet. Do you know that there is a curfew right now for the city of Fargo? I heard that there's a 10 o'clock curfew for the city of Fargo. Me and my friends, we were actually about to leave until you decided to interview me. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the curfew is going to do anything for this tonight? Um, Honestly, it's honest to the God truth, like... I, I, don't, I, I don't know what's going to make these people go home. You know, like, it's past 10 o'clock. These people are not going to leave. It's kind of sad, but I feel, honestly, like, they're going to have to do very much for people to leave because people feel like they wanted their voice to be heard, you know? And just trying to get your voice to be heard, they decide to throw tear gas at you. That's not okay. You know what I'm saying? They, at 6.02... That's why we're taking the break. At 6.02... They told us our protesters was unlawful, and they just immediately started throwing tear gas. They lied on, on the news at 6 o'clock and said we got violent, and we had never been violent. We were never violent. So now y'all having an uprage, and people are tearing down the city. But the thing about it is because of this right here, Pol police brutality. When we come out here even just to protest, we get tear gas because it's after 6 o'clock. And my curfew and until 10, let me, I can't protest till 10 o'clock. That's a free riot, right? Is it free to gather together and protest? I didn't say riot, remind you, I said protest. It's free to get out and protest. We were not violent, we were just protesting. But at 6.02, they told us we had to stop protesting. They tried, they tried to take away our freedom to protest at 6.02, and they threw tear gas. And now they're questioning the people of Fargo for tearing up their buildings and responding back to them for the police brutality. You kill a man, you put your knee on the man's neck, and then we get out and we try to cry and bleed and have tears for him, and then you tell us, you give us a certain time to be and bleed? You can't tell me how long to grieve. And for me to get out here as one, you got people, diversity of people, white, black, blue, color. You see, I, I said that and I didn't mean it, but I meant just that. Any and every color is out here today. And they're showing these people and getting together for a purpose, and they wouldn't allow them people to do that. At 602, you cannot tell them people to stop protesting. This is their free right. They don't give you right to throw tear gas because they were never violent. But do you think now people are violent? Would you people, call this a riot now? People, people are responding again to the police brutality. Again, because the police start throwing tear gas to the people for not doing nothing, their response again is to do something to the police. It keep happening. When the police do something and don't make the right decision, they expect us to be citizens and still do what is right because they say they're protecting and serving us. But at the same time, they don't think about that grief that we have to deal with. You Thank know? you so much, Chardonnay. I, there's a lot coming on right now. I want you to stay safe. Thank you so much. Mike, Beth, there's a lot happening right now. We can hear some of the things that are being put on a police, uh, the PA system of a squad car right now. I can't understand what they're saying, but more people are running this way. Uh, we can hear people yelling. We can hear some flashbangs, some more tear gas being thrown. I'm not really sure what's happening or what's being said by police, uh, but things are getting a little bit more agitated right now. Uh, I'm going to throw it back to you. We'll try and figure out what's happening here, and I'll come back to you shortly. All right. Energy getting picked up once again in downtown Fargo. We want to clear up something. Uh, we were been told that uh, there's some uh, social media uh, communications uh, indicating that buses of uh, protesters are on their way there from Kmart. Is that where the it Kmart is? The Kmart parking lot. Kmart parking lot. We're here to tell you that that is not true. 
that is not true. So if you're seeing that on Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media platform you're on, we, we can tell you that there are no buses right now. They are not coming into downtown Fargo. Also important that we clear up, uh, obviously, uh, an emotional situation there in downtown Fargo, but important to mention the Fargo police announcing that they were going to begin tear gassing people um, at the 8 o'clock hour. That was when they made the decision uh, to yeah. start dispersing and, and throwing out the tear gas, and that's two hours after uh, protesters uh, had been asked to go home and the first uh, items had been thrown and a couple of officers had been uh, in their squad car had been approached by protesters at that point. Again, this according to the Fargo Police Department, uh, they for two hours asked people to come out and then uh, to, to disperse rather. And then at 8.09, the Fargo police announced that they were releasing tear gas. Yeah, obviously what the woman was saying was may maybe a little, uh, obviously she was emotional, day. I understand that. Yeah. 6.02 was maybe when they were told to disperse. It was over with. And as the police indicated, it was after 8 o'clock before the first tear gas. Uh, and at least that's what we're getting. And we want to put this into perspective for you. Obviously, today has been a long day. You've heard us continue to remind you that this event started early this morning with a peaceful protest. Uh, we have the opportunity to attend that peaceful protest and gather some of the sights and sounds, talk to people about why they were there and what this moment meant to them. And we want to return you to that package, to that story, in order to give you a little bit bit of perspective about where this day started from. Thousands flooded the streets of downtown Fargo for George Floyd. Got, been happening for too long. He's got stopped. He got come. He got stopped. We're here to voice our opinion. A lot of voices be heard. The whole world is listening now. I don't condone the violence because I I, I don't want to see cities burned, but. We have a movement now, we have power now that we haven't had in a long time. So this matters. We stand here, we're marching for solidarity. To show that our lives, my son's life, my husband, my brothers, my friends, their lives matter. Protesters made the trek from City Hall to the police department. Organizers keeping it peaceful. Why is it important to be here today? For change, of course. Yeah, obviously, everyone's important. I mean, look all these people out here. It's change time. People need to stand up and stand together. You know, it's great to see people of all backgrounds out here together. It's real emotional. Why is this important? It is, because we, all we ask for is equality. We just want what's equal to us. It's important for our youth. It's important for everybody out here. It's very important. The rat can stop if they do the right thing. In Fargo, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. And we go from that scene to this scene, and we're hoping our camera operator, who is uh, obviously in some sort of a transition from place to place, uh, will stabilize. But that's the uh, situation that we are, are looking at. As you can see, our reporter, crime and safety reporter, Bailey Hurley, on the phone, uh, working with uh, Michael Downs down there. And Bailey, it looks like she's getting ready. Bailey, what do you have? We've got some people that are dispersing right now. Mike, Mike, oh, Mike, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you while we're, we're getting far away. Uh, the police presence has moved far east from, uh, the, from where they were earlier on First Avenue and Broadway. Oh my goodness, those are fireworks. People are lighting off anything that they can to kind of get a rise out of the protesters. Police presence is now uh, at the corner of Fifth Street North and First Avenue. Uh, you can see them, Michael, if we can zoom in on them. The police presence has quickly moved east. Uh, this is where most of all of the action has been all night. Uh, tear gas is going to be deployed soon. The smoke that you see, that's from fireworks. You hear people revving their engines. This is the more police move, the more agitated people become. Uh, so right now, police presence again on 5th Street North and 1st Avenue North. Uh, they've moved significantly at least two blocks east from when we have been checking in with you throughout the night. Uh, 
As I look towards the Moorhead side, there are officers who are blocking the uh, bridge over on the other side of the river. People are really dispersed right now, but again, I've told you, as more people become tear gassed and things happen, uh, they just go back right to where they came from and where they were before. Uh, very, Michael, can we zoom in on what's more fireworks? Oh my goodness. Uh, people are leaning and kneeling down in front of police presence right there again on 5th Street North and 1st Avenue. This, this is where all of the action has been tonight. It really gets, it, there's fireworks everywhere, Mike, and they're shooting them in every which way. Michael, we're gonna back up a little bit. This is, this is getting more dangerous as the, honestly, the seconds go on. I'm gonna send it back to you guys. We're gonna get a little bit farther back for our safety. I'll check back in with you in a few minutes. All right, All right. that's a good call, Bailey. Uh, what continues to be what I would describe maybe as a dozen folks now. Uh, but but you really have seen those crowds disperse yep. as, as it goes through. And so whether that's the police presence, and again, we heard earlier from our reporters, we heard earlier from our reporters that there were announcements going out over the PA from the police, and we couldn't quite make out what was being said, but you have to assume maybe that helped disperse this a little bit, uh, maybe informing the crews of or the people of those curfews of what could happen if you extend past them. Once again, we want to uh, reiterate something that we had just said just a few minutes ago, that there was some uh, social media rumors, if you will, but some posts indicating that maybe there's uh, buses of protesters that are going to be coming from the uh, Kmart parking lot. That is not true. This is our sky cam shot. There are uh, cars uh, gathering there, though. There are cars there, which is, which is normal. If you've, if you've been working in this area as long as we have, you know that that's kind of a social gathering point for a lot of